Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. We are back. Today I'm going to share with you the instructions, the diversity visa lottery instructions. We already know that the diversity visa lottery for 2024 will be on these specific dates. The applications will start on October 5th to November 8th. And at what exactly time the application will start basically from noon of Eastern Standard Time, the noon of New York, which might be different from each country. So you have to find out what time zone will that be. But today I'm going to share with you the new instructions. The new instructions for the diversity visa 2024 fiscal year. Why these instructions are very, very important for today. They are very important because I'm going to break down the difference between the instruction of the V2024 and the instructions uh, for previous DV years. That means you will be able to see uh, this difference. When we talk with there is no passport requirement, what will that mean? Will mean the following things. So these are the instructions for the V2024. And I'm going to share with you also the previous DV, the V2023, where they required the passport. And I will show you the V2020. I'm going to share all of these because I want to pinpoint some of the important things to know exactly what has changed in this diversity visa lottery. What's new? We talked about no passport requirement. So if we go to the instructions, will the passport be there or not be there? So I started this video by giving you the actual dates for the DV lottery. So these are the instructions for DV 2024, official instructions. If you read the official instruction for the DV 2024, the application dates are on this particular fiscal year, 2024. The application always is online. You don't do paper application and the application is done on one website only. For that particular case, I'm starting with the DV 2024 first to show you on these instructions. I will start with the passport requirement. It will be difficult to go to all instructions, but I want to pinpoint the key instructions in the diversity visa lottery. So if we start on the DV last year, the previous DV lottery, if you go to the instruction number seven, instruction number seven on the previous year, it was instruction about passport. And if you come on the search here, you put the passport, you'll find it has been used over 32 times. That is last year's uh, DV lottery. Instruction number seven wanted you to have the passport. That was last year. But in the year 2024, DV lottery year 24, if you go to the instruction number seven, there is no instruction of passport any longer. You see, last year's DV lottery, number seven was passport, then number eight is photograph. So if you go on the current DV lottery, there is no passport requirement. So the instruction number seven is just the photograph and you continue. That is section, this is section of passport, this word of passport, number seven instruction has been removed. So 
This is also to more to emphasize and encourage you to apply. What does that mean? It means as follows. It means if you are married, you have to apply as a main applicant. And then your wife, your spouse, your husband should also apply as a main applicant. Meaning you are going to have two chances of winning. That's why when we say a person who is married has higher chance of winning, it doesn't mean that the U.S. government likes people who are married. No. It means if you are married, you have opportunity, you and your spouse, to both apply as many applicants. And for that particular case, you have two chances of applying and you have two chances of winning rather than someone who is unmarried. So, this is the time for you to apply. And to add on that, let's go to the instruction for DV 2020. Before the passport was introduced, if you go before the passport, the instruction, the current instructions, if you go, in the past seven is photograph. So, it is certainly the, this was the original instruction up to DV 2020. Then, when they changed the passport, they started it. On the V2021, the V2022, and the V2023. The V2024, they went back. There is no passport requirement. So that was the biggest thing I want to make sure at the beginning of the video, we are together. Meaning, you have a chance if you are married to apply. If you have a child who is maybe 17, 18, 19, 20, despite that child being in your application as a parent, let that child also apply as a main applicant by himself or by herself, meaning you are giving your child a chance. A father is applying, he says, married with a child who is 18. A mother is applying, he has a child who is 18. The child is added there. And that child who is 18 is going to be added in the application. So you have three chances of applying and getting the diversity visa. So the purpose is to make sure that we give the chance people to apply correctly and win by following the instruction. After uh, the DV lottery, uh, with the passport requirement, it received many people to apply. Usually before the passport requirement, we used to have 18 to 20 or 21 million people applying for the diversity visa lottery. Then with the passport, the maximum number of people have ever applied was 8 million. So this year we expect it to go at least 15 to 20 million applications. So make sure you don't lose this opportunity for you to apply. Follow the instruction and apply. So this is the instruction. The biggest change is the removal of the passport. So if the removal of the passport, what the passport, I mean, what is the what is the new change i mean what will the application form look like the application form will look like this one let me show you when you go to apply this is what will happen but now you cannot see where to apply because it's not the date to start application when application starts it will be checked status and then you will see the word green in green you say beginning entry it will be like this way beginning entry when you see the word beginning entry, it means you are allowed to start to do application. So this will be shown only from noon of Eastern Standard Time uh, on October 5th until November uh, 8th. After November 8th at noon, this goes away. It comes back to this way. So how is the application form look like? So this is the application form without the requirement of the passport. So this application form is divided into section. The part one is the information overall for any person to apply as the main applicant. I'm going back and forth between instructions and the form so that when I explain what does this mean on the application form, it will be easier for you to understand. Let me show you. When I'm going to review this one, I will be able to go with application form with this one. So, 
Let's go to the application form. Then I'll be coming back to the instruction and I'll be able to show you. They say you have the part one is entrance information, meaning the information of the main applicant. With the information of the main applicant in the United States, in the form, they say you have to start with your last name or your family name. Then your first name, then your middle name. You must be careful on how you arrange your names. Some people make a mistake on the last name to be the first. Make sure you use the name correctly. I have a video explaining how to fill the names correctly, how to arrange your names correctly. Then there is gender. You have to put the gender correctly. Birth date. Majority of people, they make a mistake here. Why do they make a mistake? Is because they started putting the date in single uh, of the month. The date in the US, I mean, the how you put your birthday or your uh, date, you start with the month, day, year. Make sure you arrange this correctly, accordingly. There are some people, even myself, I've, I've done one time a mistake, but a mistake in birth date, a mistake in name will not affect you from being given the visa if you win. Then, one of the biggest problem people have is the city of birth or birth city. So forget about when they say don't enter the district, country or province. If you have a passport, the name which is written on the passport, the place of birth in your passport or in your birth certificate, write it there. Let me give you an example. There is a city of Nairobi. And then let's say there is Kibera. If you are born in Kibera, Kibera is within Nairobi. And you put the place of birth is Kibera. Forget about it, whether it's the city or what. If that is written in a document, just write that one. So that is easy. The country where you are born. The country where you are born is the most important information uh, on the DV lottery. So let's go to the instruction. Eligibility for someone to apply depends on two issues or two main factors. Number one, you must be a native of the country with a low number of immigration to the United States. That means there are countries which are not eligible. Bangladesh, Brazil, Canada, China, Colombia, Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Haiti, uh, Honduras, India, Jamaica, Mexico, Nigeria, Pakistan, Philippines, Republic of Korea, uh, which is South Korea, United Kingdom, uh, and the territories, then Venezuela and Vietnam. Those are the countries which are not eligible. Meaning, in all those countries, in Africa, only Nigeria is not required. And it's not required because it has already over 50,000 people who have been given green card based on the family or work green card sponsorship. That is the reason. So, but if, let's say, you are born in Nigeria and your spouse, your wife, or your husband is from Ghana, you are allowed to apply and claim the eligibility based on the country of the birth of your spouse. It doesn't matter about your citizenship. So, if you go to the instruction, uh, they say the country of birth. This is a scroll down menu, meaning you have to, you click here, the countries will come down. Make sure you put the correct country. There is someone, instead of putting Somalia, it came to Samoa and is the developer the winner. So his case number is from Oceania, but the person is from, 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 from Somalia. So don't rush. That's why we tell people, don't rush in the DV lottery application. Yes, you have to fill it fast, but not to rush on the key important information. Someone, instead of putting Cameroon, put Cape Verde. That is a mistake. You will be denied the visa. Then, by default, if the country of birth, the answer will be yes. Unless otherwise the country of birth is Nigeria. The country of birth is the country which is not eligible, like these countries. If you are born in Bangladesh, but you are applying based on your spouse, you will say no, and you will put in the country of your spouse. But if you are born in a country which is eligible, if you are in Africa, you are born in any country in Africa, except you are born in Nigeria, the answer by default will be yes.
the eligibility country is the country of birth, unless otherwise the country of birth is not eligible and you are basing, you are claiming eligibility based on the other country. So the eligibility number one is the country of birth. You must be a native of the countries, all the countries, exception are those countries which are not allowed. It's not about citizenship. It doesn't matter whether how many passports you have. If you are born in Tanzania, but you are a refugee from Congo, you are a refugee from Burundi, you are a refugee from Rwanda, still the, the place of birth, eligibility be based on the country of birth, you will put the country of birth, whether it's Tanzania, the country where you are born, regardless of your citizenship at the moment. The second eligibility, which confuses the people, is this one. Each applicant must meet education or work experience requirement. You must have either one of the two. Either means either this one or this one. Either or. If you have both, it's good. But they want one of the two. Meaning, you must have at least high school education. And high school education in the United States and basically in the world is 12 years of formal elementary and secondary school. Not the one you study online. You have gone to school morning to afternoon, every single day, whatever, for 12 years. So people who are just studying on their own, on the private, and then they take the exam as a private candidate, no, that doesn't count. What they want is actual high school, defined that one. If you don't have high school education, you need to have at least two years of work experience in the past five years. Remember, not every work experience is going to qualify. That's why they say, based on the Department of State, there is this online onet website, which is going to be used to determine that. I will show you an example. This is the website. Let me zoom. And then I'll be able to show you what I mean. So let's say your job is a cook. Let's say you are cooking at fast food or you are cooking at a restaurant. Let's show you the difference. If you are cooking at fast food, you go, you scroll down, then there is something called SVP. This is the range which is going to determine whether you qualify or not. This job is below 4.0. That's the qualify. Let me go down here on more work experience and you will be able to see. You will be able to see when we say work experience, meaning uh, you have to find out there are some people that have good work experience, but they do not know how to put the work experience in the application. So let's go on the work experience. Okay, I want to just to find the uh so this is the work experience I'm talking about. Uh, if you don't meet the requirement of education and the education, this is what they say. Uh it has to be defined as completion, not equivalent, completion of 12 years primary and secondary school in the United States. Or Completion of those kind of those one in your country, but it must be equivalent to the United States. Again, the correspondence, like GED, are not acceptable. Meaning, if you study as a private candidate in your country and you do funding credits, whatever, those don't apply. So, work experience, they say, if you go to the online on it, you go to that job zone and you find a specific vocational preparation. SVP rating range. That range uh, is designated from job zone four. Uh, so you need to have a uh, kind of, the, this is the example they give, for instance, like the example. But when what do they need? They need for you to have at least six and above to qualify uh, for you to be able to be allowed to be given that one. The SVP to qualify, it's supposed to be this range. To qualify for a degree based on work experience, you must be within the past five years, two years experience in occupation uh, range seven or higher. So this one doesn't qualify. 
So that one doesn't qualify. So let's say you are working at your head chef at a, a famous restaurant. Let's go to SVP range. So, for instance, uh, you say uh, six to up to this one. A little bit you can qualify that. So that's the point I want to explain is the work experience is needed during the time of the interview. When you win, you are going to fill the visa form. So in case you don't have the required work experience, I will come to the photograph. In case you go to the work education here and you don't have, let's say you don't have high school, put in the correct education you have, but then once you win, you will put the correct work experience based on what you have, but you have to use the proper title on the work experience, which are defined on the uh, some people can be a good teacher, but how they put, how they write is not a good way or a wrong title. You can be a chef and you put, oh, I'm a cook, but a cook is not like a normal cook versus a head chef are uh, two different things. So the other important part is the education in the DV lottery. So the education here, there is a primary school only if you didn't go to secondary school. High school, no degree, it means you went to high school, you didn't complete. So if you if you go and you don't have high school education, but you went to high school, just choose this one, high school, no degree. If you finish, you completed the high school, you have certificate, you choose high school degree. It's not a degree, it's a bachelor degree, no. It's just you completed the high school. They used to use the word high school diploma, now they change. They use the high school degree in the high school, no degree. Vocational, here they say uh, you must have a minimum, you know, a minimum level for a high school. Uh, and then you can put a vocation. But again, with the vocation and work experience, you'll be able to help you that. So if, let's say, you went from high school and you have a diploma. Remember, diploma is not a level of education here in the DV lottery. So if you went to high school, and then you finish and then you went to diploma just to choose high school. That will be more than enough because there is no a diploma as a level of education. Then there is some university courses. Meaning you are currently at the university uh, studying or you are studying, you didn't complete, you maybe you, are, you decide to quit, you decide to leave, you, you, are, you are expelled from university, but you are studying university to get a degree. Not you are studying at the university to get a certificate to say that is some university courses. No, we mean some university courses are the courses which are leading to bachelor's degree. Then the university degree means you completed the bachelor degree. Some graduate level courses, that means you are studying master's. Master's means you have completed the master's. Some doctorate level means you are studying PhD now. And then doctorate, you have completed that one. You have to choose the level of education. If you choose any education level by mistake, which is not your category, will not affect you from being given the visa if you win. Again, they are not going to select someone to be given the visa just based of the education. It doesn't mean that if someone put a doctorate, they are going to select you than the other person. No. The education level here is only just education level. It has nothing to do with the selection process. So don't, if someone has won, has masters, don't come to say, oh, Mr. So or Ms. So, so has won because the person has master's degree. No. But we said you must have high school or two years of work experience. Remember, in the application form, there is no any place where you'll be required to put the work experience. The work experience, you'll put exactly the work experience when you win the DV lottery. So let's go back to the instruction DV 2024. So I finish the important part of the requirement. And remember still the application for DV 2024 started from noon, October 5th to November 8th on Tuesday. That is the time to apply. We finish that instruction. 
The other important part, I've already talked about the names. The names should be put to you properly. All those things I've already talk, talked about the country of eligibility. Listen, uh, uh, if you put a wrong country of eligibility, you'll be in trouble. Then it comes to the digital photograph. There are so many instructions on the photograph. One is supposed to be taken within six months. Remember, your photo, your photo, if you are, you are married, or any derivative child, any children you have, all the photos must meet the requirement. If you just go to the studio to take the photo on your own, and you don't take your, your spouse, the photo of your dependent has a blue background, while your photo has white background, you will be eliminated. So that is something you need to, to, to know that. But if your child or your spouse is a US citizen or a permanent resident, you do not need to add that child or that spouse on the DV lottery. You are not required to do that. So the digital photograph requirement are as follows here below. Uh, number one, don't use the photo you used last year. Don't use the photo you used last year. The photo must be recent and not the previous developer photo. The photo must be in color. You must be, it must be in focus. This is the size of the photo. Uh, Taken is the uh, current appearance. Uh, white background, you have to face the camera. There is no wearing the glasses. There is no uniforms. Uh, so those are the things uh, you need to, to know that. There is no to wear a hat or something like that way. No headphone, no eyeglasses. So those are the photos wherever they have. Currently, I'm working on something. I'm working, I know, we talked about the, let me show you. We talked about the one of the website, uh, egreencardiphoto.com. Uh, this website, which used to help many people to apply, to change the, uh, to this website, I will show you one second. Uh, this website, which used it to help people to edit videos, to edit photos for the DV lottery, is no longer available. I don't know what's going on. I made this video a couple, uh, couple years ago, but this website is no longer functioning. This website is no longer functioning. So for that particular case, is if you open this website, it doesn't work. I'm working on the new website. You can see this is EBM Scholars. The website is not active yet. So this website, it will be what you do. Let's say you come here. Let me give you an example. Let me find a photo like this photo, but this photo is not in, like already in square. But let's assume it will be able to re remove. If you upload that photo, it will be able to upload. And if you do that way, it will be able to remove the background. And if you download the photo, will you be able to have JPEG photo, which meets the requirement. And the requirement will be this one, not exceeding 240 kilobytes, but this one, the size will be 100 kilobytes, and is JPEG uh, on that particular kind of, yeah. So that will be the way on how uh, the website will be able to work. But at the moment, uh, the website is not working yet, but I'm working to create this website to make it easier for people to be able to uh, to do the photos and apply. Uh -oh. So that is the website I'm working on at the moment. So the photograph is the most important information. It has to be in JPEG. It has to be less than 240 kilobytes. The ratio, it has to be a proper ratio. 
pixels must be this dimension. So these are the most important photo uh, which should not be different. Uh, if you put those kind of mistakes, you'll be able to have a problem uh, into the developer application. So millions of people are not winning, are eliminated automatically because of the photo. So another way, uh, so that is one of the ways, but I will show different ways later on how to edit the photo. I have so many other ways. Uh, without a website, you can be able to edit your photo on the computer, or you can be able to edit the photo using other websites. You can be able to do that. Uh, I can give you an example. Uh, let me give you an example. For those people who have Canva, uh, Canva is a website which you can use to edit videos or you can be able to edit photos. So I created a template, for instance, uh, this one is already, let me show you. Let me show you example. So this one, I went, you go to Canva. So I went to Canva. What I did, I created it on the size. I created 600 times 600. Uh, so what it me measurement I wanted, I wanted pixels. So I created 600 times 600 pixels, which uh, this is the uh, the size I create this one. So this is the photo on 600 times 600 pixel, uh, pixels to be this way. Then I uploaded the photo. Let me sh use the photo I upload of someone. So this is the photo I upload. So if I upload this photo, Okay, so if I upload this photo, what I do, I zoom, I just enlarge the photo to meet the area, just like normal. Okay, so the photo will be like this way. So if this is the photo, but still there is a background which is not white. So you come here, I click on the picture, I click edit video. This is a free, you just click remove background. You can do that way. This is one of the way you can be able to do. It will remove the background. Already the photo, that will be the photo which meets the requirement. And when I save this photo, unfortunately, so when I, I save this photo, it will be able to be, but it's, it's saving direct as PNG. Uh, this is the photo has been saved. But if you look, this photo is not a uh, JPEG, is JP, uh, uh, PNP, PNP, whatever. So I come to save as, and then I change to JPEG, and then I save it. So let me move me th this one, then I go to the one which I saved. Uh, I'm going, what is it? Okay. I want to show you the one which uh, it has been able to to save on the uh, on the JPEG. So you have to make sure that you use the correct measurements. So this is the one which now is saved. This one, uh, where if you look on the. Uh, it's already this one. Uh, what is the? Okay. Uh, let me quickly like, resize. If I want to resize, this one is already 600 times 600 and 210 kilobytes. It meets the requirements because it's not more than two, uh, 240. So this one, if you go to upload, it will be able to work on it. So that is one of the way you can be able to do. Another way, uh, you have to go on the website, it's called remove.bg. It just means remove background. You upload the photo. Let me find the photo. The photo is here. <coughs> Let me go to the original photo. This is the original photo. The original photo. I usually don't advise someone to wear a white shirt. I don't. It's okay, but I don't. So if this is the photo, I quickly remove background, it removes the background. But I come here on the way edit, it will give me the option of different background I want to change. 
I can change to any background. So instead of this photo, I click the word color. <coughs> I click the word color and I choose white color as the white background. But this is just to remove the background, not to put the measurement. So let me show you. Then I download this one. When I download this one, it comes here, but still it's not a proper measurement. So depending on what you use to use open your photo. So for me, I, mean, I use this. This is just like the photo image on your computer. If I click open a photo, I click here, the word resize. You see, this is not a proper measurement. So I come here, I come uh, to remove this one. So I remove this one and then I put a 600 times the 600. I'm giving you an example. If I want to do that way, it will come to measurement of 600. If I save, it comes to 600 by 600. Oh, first of all, you can just decide, first of all, you can decide to uh, to crop if you want to remove to put into a smaller size, and then you can. So there are different ways, but there are so many complicated ways. But I'm looking for sim simpler way for you to be able to uh, to edit the photo. I know it's very complicated, but remember the DV photo is the one which makes people win the V lottery, and it makes millions of people not to win the green card lottery. So that is the place of the photograph. So when you upload the photo, basically the only thing here they'll be able to tell you the photo is wrong is if the photo is up is more than 240 kilobytes. But if you are wearing glasses, they're not telling you the photo is wrong. If you have the blue background, they're not saying the photo is wrong. If there is a shadow, they're not going to tell you it's wrong. They are going to delete, they are going to eliminate you in the selection process. So make sure that the photo is correct. It's your responsibility. Then there is the aspect of the address. I've told the people there is a video about address. Put any address. This address means nothing at all. The country where you live today. If you put you are you live, you live in Oman, it means the interview location will be in Oman. But you can change the location by default. When you put the when you put the uh, location of the interview, it will give you, I mean, the country where you live today to give the location of the interview. So, but this, it, you can change the location of the interview anytime when you are going to fill the form. Phone number is not important. Email address, it's most important part of the application. Don't use the email address of anybody. Use your email address. For the people who are going to the place like internet cafe, cyber. Don't use the email address of the person who owns that cyber or internet cafe. Use your email address. This year I'll be filling the application form for people. I'm not using my email address. I want to use your email address because that is the email address you'll be communicating with Kentucky Consular Center cases if you win. So that is another important. Again, marital status. There is no marital status of being engaged fiance fiance there is no that marital status if you are going to get married on october 10 and you are applying on october 5th you are still unmarried even if it will be five hours before you apply you are going to get married you are unmarried so unmarried is a person who is not married so you choose that one don't put your girlfriend or your boyfriend put your husband or wife here then there is marital, uh, majority of people will be if you are married, you are uh, your spouse is not a permanent resident or U.S. citizen. For those who are spouse are U.S. citizen or uh, permanent resident, it means they don't need a photo. Divorced, it means you have a legal document. You are divorced, not just say oh we are divorced. No, widowed that means you are widowed. You are spouse has passed away. Separation. It means it's a legal separation. Legally separated. Not by legally, it means it's the court. These are the instructions people should know because this is confusing people when they just say, oh, we are separated because we live in different uh, uh, different places. No. Let me show you the instructions. Sorry about... Uh, 
let me show you the instruction. Let me start on the marital status, this one. Married, that one, uh, legally separated is a legal separation. Failure to list your eligible spouse or listing someone who is not your spouse, people who are applying to put your girlfriend as your wife, you will be ineligible for the DV lottery applicant and everybody will be not given the visa. You must list your spouse even if you are currently separated from her, and him or her, unless you are legally separated. Legal separation is an arrangement where a couple remain married but lived apart following a court order. If there is no court order, it doesn't matter. You are still married. So that is another part, which is very, very important. Number of children. Don't come here, put zero, and let us say, oh, I forgot to put my children. No. The number of children, you cannot forget to put zero while you have three kids. Make sure, if you have children, make sure you have their photo too. And the photo of your children must meet the photo of your, the main applicant too, requirements. If you say you are married here, it will ap appear the second page of your spouse as one spot. If you say zero, is zero. If we say you have two children, two spo two areas of children, like you are, uh, two children will come there. If you are married with ten wives, is up to you. It doesn't work. It's just one wife. So if you say you, are, you have children, children must be people who are under the age of who? First of all, children must be biological children under the age of, first of all, have to be uh, uh, must be alive, living children, under the age of 21 of age, whether they live with you or they don't live with you, whether they'll come with you, whether they're not coming with you. As long as they're under the age of 21, they must be included. And the photograph, your children photograph must have the technical specif specification of their own, exactly like your application. Children must be Alive biological children must be adopted, legal adoption by the court, or uh, unmarried children, but they are stepchildren. You are legally married, and they are stepchildren who are under the age of 21, and they are unmarried. If they are 18 and they are married, they are not included, or they are already 21, they are not included. If they are already in the U.S. and they have green card or they are U.S. citizens, you don't need to include them. Failure to list your children or all your children, eligible children, or listing someone who is not your child, you are ineligible. And many people, they are denied the visa because of marriage and children to add people who don't qualify. That is the big mistake. So if you say you, you, you are married, it comes to part two derivatives. You put your spouse, even if you are married with five wives, it will come to one area of spouse. That's all. The information, picture, and everything. Children, it will come like this way. Uh, it will show uh, if you have two children, three children, it will come like that way, where you will be able to do that way. So, So you can see now, that is the application. And then you can click preview and then you submit. Once you submit, you'll get the confirmation number and that will be the application completed. So on this, uh, uh, if you look on these instructions, make sure your names are correct. Make sure you don't mess up the date of birth. Make sure you put the correct education level. Make sure you apply within the application dates which are provided there. Make sure you put your names exactly as they appear in your birth, uh, your birth certificate or uh, passport if you have the passport. Make sure you put the photo to meet the requirements as supposed to be. The photograph is the most important. The mailing address is not a big deal even if you put a wrong one, it's not okay. It's not a problem. Email address 
an email address to which you have direct access and you will continue to have added direct, uh, access until May of the next year. In May, and then uh, you are being selected, you later receive the follow-up email communication. Your communication will be based on that, uh, yeah. The results you'll be able to check on your own. Make sure you put in the correct the education level, marital status, don't lie. Number of children, put the correct one. The photos must be correct. Those are the instruction of the DV lottery. But the bigger part, there is no passport you have seen. That's why if you come here now on the DV 2024 uh, and search the ready passport, you will see the ready passport. It appears on this page just five times. Just the ready passport. And it just appears on the place where they say, make sure your name appears as a passport. But if you come to last year's DV lottery, the ready passport has appeared on 32 times on the instructions. This means that uh, the instruction now, passport is not there and it is easier for you to apply. It is easier for you and your spouse. It is easier to add your children and for them to be able to be the winners. So those are the things uh, in order for you to be able to understand. So one of the few things uh, I have to quickly review this one before I click at the end of this one. Uh, tomorrow, which is Saturday, I'll be traveling to Kenya. I'll be in Kenya, in Nairobi. I'm having the event in Nairobi. So for people who will be in Kenya, I'll be in... Uh, I'll be in... Why, uh, what is the place? Uh, I'll have the two events in Nairobi, Kenya. Let me open the computer and I will show you uh, the events. Uh, it is a free event, which will be in Kenya. You can see this one. The event, uh, it is on Monday, on Monday, on uh, September 26th. I'll be in a Young Women's Christian Association. Uh, is that is the venue? Is uh, near Rodi, near Serena Hotel, Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, there will be two groups. The first group, I'll, I'll be there from 10 to 2 p.m., 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, that will be the first event. I'll have a break uh, from 2.30 uh, to 6 p.m. That is the event. So if you are in Kenya, you want to see me or to meet me, I'll be in Kenya. Uh, please just show up there. Uh, there is no any place you need to register. Come to that particular event and you'll be able to do, uh, to meet. Uh, any person wants to meet me, I'll be arriving uh, at 9, uh, 9.20, 9.30 on Sunday uh, at Nairobi, uh, Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. That is the time I'll be arriving. So if you want, I mean, I know it is late. If you want to hang out at 9 at that time, uh, 9.30, I'll be coming out. You can be able to have last minute dinner, catching up for two hours, whatever, before you go to sleep at 11. I don't know. But on Sunday, at I'm arriving at Sunday night at 9.30 at Jomo Kenyatta Airport. Uh, then on Monday, I'll have that event. So if any person wants to uh, to come there, uh, please just show up at that time, either on the first group from 10 to 2. We'll be talking about Green Candy Lottery, everything about Green Candy Lottery. And in case you don't win Green Candy Lottery, what other ways, what other opportunities uh, for you to be able to come there? So. Uh, just come there, and if you are the person with the media, you want to come there and do a live stream, you are welcome. Get, be my guest. Tag any person who is a media you want to come there to record and post. The aim is to give more awareness to people so that many people will be able to apply. So that is the event on, uh, that is the event will be on Monday, but I'll be arriving uh, at Jomo Kenyatta uh, at 9.30 on Sunday uh, night. So I'll be happy to meet some people. Uh, so that will be uh, the one of the area of that way. Uh, but also for people who are in Tanzania, uh, Dar es Salaam. Uh, in Dar es Salaam, uh, I'll be in Tanzania. There will be an event on Saturday, October 1st. 
at Ubungo Plaza. Uh, that event will be that is small, just about two dollar entrance because the cost of renting uh, a hall, uh, the venue was very very expensive, more than two thousand US dollar. So I had to put entrance fee so that we can pay for the venue in Kenya. The venue was cheaper. I just paid that one. So that's why in Kenya it's free entry, but in Tanzania you have to pay just two dollar to be able to attend that one. So that's another thing I want to make sure that people understand. Uh, these are the opportunities we want to make sure that many people will be there. Uh, next, beginning of next year, I'll be going to West Africa. Uh, so those are the things I want to make sure that we are all together. So, uh, so these are the few things. For those people who speak Swahili, uh, there is uh, EBM Swahili channel, which has, uh, this is EBM Scholars channel, first of all, and then there is EBM Swahili which has so many uh, videos. If you click EBM Swahili, you'll be able to see uh, so many videos over there. So this is my alternative, my other channel. For anyone who speaks Swahili from Kenya, from Tanzania, from BRC Congo, make sure you also go and subscribe to this channel. I have so many videos also, but in Swahili, for those people who want the videos in Swahili. So there is a Swahili and there is English channel. So it's up to you. And I'm going to upload more videos I've uploaded more videos, more videos to come. Uh, if I show you, let me show you a quick one. Uh, there are so many videos. Let me show behind the scene. Uh, these are already posted videos. You see all these videos, all these videos I've uploaded. I haven't published them. There are all these videos. I've uploaded them. I haven't published them. So there are so many videos about Green Card Lottery. These are short videos. I created like one minute video, two minutes video. You can see the videos are just short nowadays. Two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. So the aim is to make sure that people just get two minutes like, okay, quicker one instead of having 15, 20 minutes when you don't have the good internet to be able to do that way. So, uh, so that is uh, about the green card application. Uh, the... Uh, So you can see over there, make sure that you apply. Uh, don't wait on the last day. They give you that one because the last week there is high delays on the website is very, very that way. So those are the things I want to make sure that we are all together to, uh, to do that one. So. Yeah, any person wants to arrive to attend at YMCA, uh, whatever, come there, we'll be able to do that. I'll be happy to uh, meet some people, uh, just answering some questions. That will be the uh, the best way to meet some people. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, okay, there is the talk show with Sami. Okay, thank you. And any person, a YouTuber, wants to, to catch up to have just a different collaboration, I'll be happy to do that. Apart from that, don't forget uh, to make sure that you continue to support, to uh, go to my Instagram. I, I'm, I've been posting so many things on Instagram. Uh, my YouTube, uh, Swahili YouTube channel is there. So, yeah, so those are make uh, the ways you can be able to uh, uh, okay apart from that I would like to say thank you each and everyone I appreciate for your continued support uh, so the green card lottery time we know and it's time for you to be ready for the application it's time for you to make sure that you Follow all the procedures. Don't uh, try to, even if you make a mistake, don't do another. If you have already submitted the application, you find out you made a mistake on the name or date of birth or place of birth, don't submit another application. It will be considered as a duplicate application because the facial cognition will be able to determine it's you. You have done the second application. So don't do that. Uh, so that is something you need to know uh, that the application dates are on those days. And there is no passport requirement for the DV 
lottery application. Until next time, everyone, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'm going to get you ready to fin finalizing uh, process to uh, prepare myself because tomorrow early morning uh, at 7 a.m. I'll be into the flight starting to go to Kenya. So see you each and everyone who will be in Kenya and those who will be in Tanzania, I'll be able to see you there. In Tanzania, I'll be helping people to fill the form on the ground uh, for a small amount of fee and I'll be taking the pictures, I'll be editing the pictures and I'll be able to do that. So thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. May God keep blessing you. Uh, until next time, goodbye everyone.